Hi there, and thanks for tuning in with Math with Waltons. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 14.1, Finding Square Roots, and we're going to be looking at 10 things to write in our notes today, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to make sure we know is whenever we square a number or whenever we find the square root of a number. So whenever you multiply a number by itself, you square the number, and to undo this, you take the square root of that number. Here are also two examples for you to write down as well. So just make sure you write down the difference between when you square a number and when you find the square root of a number and the two examples to do to go with that. Let's go ahead and pause the video now and write down what's underlined and circled and once you're done click play so you can try some questions. So this one we're going to look at to see how we're going to find the square root. So this sample is a square and if the area is 121 that means both sides being multiplied together should be equal to 121, and that's the same thing as finding the square root of 121. I know that 11 times 11 is 121, so each side would be 11 feet long. Here are two that you are going to try. Number two is probably going to be a little bit easier for you. Three might take a little bit of work. Let's go ahead and try, to try these both. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the side lengths or the square root of each of those areas. All right, so for number two, you're basically finding the square root of 81, and that one actually have you should have memorized. The square root of 81 is 9, so your answer to number two is 9 because 9 times 9 is 81, okay? For number three, that was a little bit more challenging um, because I don't know the actual square root of 324, so what I had to do is show my work. I started off by just doing 16 times 16 because I do know that 15 times 15 is 225. 16 times 16 is 256, so I'm going to go up one more and maybe do 17 times 17. And then 17 times 17 is 289, so probably 18 times 18 should work. And 18 times 18 is 324, so all of these, the square root of 324, will be 18 for number 3. Okay? The next two you're also going to try, these are a little bit different. You can actually kind of use what I did on the previous page to help you solve for number four. And then number five, you're just finding the square root of each individual part of the fraction, the square root of the numerator, the square root of the denominator. Let's go ahead now and pause the video here so you can try both four and five. And once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, so for number four, notice it says 2.89. We just were able to see that 17 times 17 is 289. So if we're just adding a decimal in there, moving it twice to the right, that means my answer should be 1.7 for the square root of 2.89. Okay? If you check it on your calculator or you check it um, working it out, it does give you 2.89 because you're moving your decimal two times back and to the left. It's essentially doing 17 times 17, moving your decimal two times. For number five, you're essentially thinking about the square root of four ninths or the square root of four over the square root of nine. The square root of four is two and the square root of nine is three. So that, mean my, that means my answer for number five is two thirds. The next thing we're gonna talk about in, um, is number six, okay? And I want you to maybe think about this one first so what we're going to do now is we're just going to pause the video and you're going to think about what two square roots could be 49, okay? I'll give you a hint as well. Maybe think about Monkey Man and how you're going to answer this. Go ahead and take time now to try it. Okay, the two square roots of 49, you can do 7 times 7 to get to 49. So 7 is one square root. You could also do negative 7 times negative 7 and still get positive 49. So negative 7 is also an option there. So these are the two square roots of 49, 7 and negative 7. What we're going to do now is we're going to get you to try 7a through 7c. Um, notice with these on letter b and c, your answer is going to include a negative because there's a negative on the outside. And then for letter C, your answer is going to include a, include a positive negative because the, that is also located on the outside. Let's go ahead and pause the video now so you can try 7A, B, and C. And once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, so for letter A, um, the square root of 25 is 5. Okay. For letter B, 
it's we were basically thinking about the negative square root of three of sorry over square root of nine sixteenths. You're essentially remember finding the square root of nine over the square root of sixteen. So that's going to give you three over four, and then you just keep this negative here. So my answer is negative three fourths. Letter C, you're just thinking about the positive and negative square root of 64, and that is going to be 8. You could also say positive 8 or negative 8 because of that positive and negative there, but this way that I circle is the ideal way. Let's go ahead and try a few more with numbers 8 and 9. Number 8, you are finding the two square roots of the number, so going back to what we did in number 6, and then number nine, just kind of a follow-up of what we just did. Go ahead and pause now so you can try all of those. And once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, so for number eight, the two square roots are six and negative six. For letter B, that'll be 10 and negative 10. And letter C, that'll be 11 and negative 11. For letter A and number nine, the square root of or sorry, the negative square root of 1 is negative 1. All I did was just find the square root of 1 and then bring down the negative there. For letter B, remember I'm just finding the square root of 4 and the square root of 25 individually. I know the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 25 is 5, and then I'm just bringing down this plus minus sign. So there's my final answer for letter B. And then letter C, I'm essentially finding the negative square root of 144. I know the square root of 144 is 12, and then again, just bringing down the negative there, okay? Last little bit for 10a through 10c. What you're going to try is just evaluating the square root first and then solving each expression. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video, try each one, and then once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, for letter a, the first thing I did was find the square root of 36, which is 6. So I have 5 times 6 plus 7. I know 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 plus 7 is 37. For letter B, this one was a little bit tricky unless you saw that 18 over 2 can also be reduced to just 9. So essentially you're just finding the square root of 9, okay? So I'm finding 1 fourth plus the square root of 9. I know the square root of 9 is 3, so I'm essentially doing 1 fourth plus 3. That's going to give me 3 and one fourth. The last one in letter C, I'm finding the square root of 81, which I know is nine, but then I am squaring it one more time. So nine squared is equal to 81, and 81 minus five is gonna give me 76, okay? With these over here, you are essentially um, the square root and the squared simple, they cancel out. So all that's left will be whatever number is inside there, okay? So it doesn't really matter if you have 218. That's still equal to 218 because the square root and the square cancels each other out. That's all we had time for today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.